Oh, guess what time it is. It's Beer Making 101. We got our Mr. Beer Beer Kit. Oh, yeah. We're going to try to make some beer, folks. So we got our keg just about ready. I got some warm water in there. I got to put some sanitizing solution in it. Got all my utensils that will also be sanitized. Here's our bottles. We got eight bottles. And the beer we're going to make is a Northwest Pale Ale. Too bad I can't orange some, add some orange peel to that. <laughs> but that's uh, it so far. We'll see how we're doing. As we're going along, we're at Beer Making 101. So one of the first steps is add half of this into the jug. Because we saved the other half for the bottles. So here we go. We're going to add that into the jug. So now we got the jug sanitized. And some of the stuff wouldn't fit into the jug. So you're supposed to be doing it like this. You're going to sanitize everything. With the sanitizing solution. Just turn back and forth the spigot a bunch of times, back and forth. Place onto a sterile area. Which I've made. You gotta sterilize a spoon. You have to use a metal spoon, it says don't use wood. Don't know why. Right, of course it's coarse. I got some measuring spoons inside the jug. That's what fit. This other stuff wouldn't fit. So we're gonna sterilize all these. Supposed to rinse this stuff either. You're supposed to just do that. And we'll get in the jug and get the measuring cup. After we'll dump it out, that way we'll do it that way. Alright, all is sanitized and drying. You don't rinse. Now we gotta get to the next level of preparing the beer. So now we got four cups of water, gotta boil. And it says add the malt extract into a hot tap water. I guess it, so it loosened up in there, I don't know. And we've got some cold water we have to add into the jug in a little bit here. Got to get that all ready. I got one there and another one down there. Again, you're watching Beer Making 101 with Clark. So here's our malt extract. We gotta add it to the boiling water. That's what it says to do. And now stir. I had to stop for a second and get part of the label from the can went in there. I <laughs> had to get that out of there. Now you gotta keep stirring this. Stirring it, stirring it, stirring it. So now we're gonna take our cold water and we're gonna add it to our jug. And it says up to the four quart line. That's where we're gonna fill it. I think we're just about there. All right, we got our water in. Now we're going to add our malt mixture. All right, now it says add the malt liquor mixture. That's what we're doing. And have to add more water till it gets to the top line. It's over here. So stir and add the yeast yeast packet it says add the yeast 
then apparently after you add the yeast, it doesn't say stir. Now we just put the lid on. My beer is fermenting now. So now I'm going to take my keg. I'm going to put it in the basement because that's a good place where it can hold 68 to 76 degrees. It's got to be out of direct sunlight. It's going to ferment for like 7 to 14 days. So that'd be pretty good. In 24 hours I'll be able to see the fermentation pro fermenting process happening. I'll flash a light in there. I don't know if I'll be able to film that or not. And uh, you see the yeast working. And you should see rising bubbles from the liquid and be bubbles on the surface too. That's pretty cool, huh? Alright, here we go. Alright. We'll come back in seven to fourteen days. It's gonna be sitting down here. It's the only good place I found is my chime room where I make my chimes. All right, this is day 14. They say we're going to give it a little sample here. They open up the spigot. Try just a little bit. And give this a shot. They say if it's sweet, it's got to go a couple more days. And if it's just like flat beer, I don't know what flat beer tastes like. We'll give it a shot. First taste of it, that's not bad. Tastes like what you would get at one of the microbrews. A little flat. So I'm going to let go one more day. I'm going to get the bottles ready and we'll bottle it all up. Ain't, pretty, ain't too bad. Yeah. All right. So it's day 15. I'm going to add the other half of the snow rinse cleanser into the jug of warm water. It says stir till dissolve, but I think we can put it in a jug and shake it. We'll shake it around real good, make sure it's dissolved in there that way. So as my jugs here is sitting for a few minutes, let that dissolve. Got the bottles all set and ready. Got my lids. We're gonna fill these only half full. You only gotta put half of the sterile water in each bottle for a little bit. Using a sanitized measuring cup, go ahead and fill each one or a half. You only go halfway on each bottle. I'm thinking about a cup, make it easier. Of course, in these bottles, it's going to take two or three cups. They're big bottles, you can see the size of them. Whoo! All right. Got each bottle with about roughly two cups of water in each one, the sterile water in it. Now we got to put all the lids on. All right, now we got all the lids on. Now you know what you got to do. You got to take one at a time with the lids on and shake. Each one, just shake it. So everything in there gets covered, the lid. That's how I gotta do each one. We won't do that on video. All right, we shook the heck out of all these. They're shook. Now you just pour it out. It doesn't really say you can just start pouring the beer in there, but I think I'm gonna let it set. I'll set them all upside down so they can drain real good. But uh, we'll go from there. Next step is bottling them. Then we can't wait to the drinking. All right. Well, it's been 15 days and we're getting ready to pour our beer in our bottles. And it says in the rules, they're supposed to put like two and a half teaspoons of 
sugar in each bottle. Or they have these now, they say it's just the same thing, carbonation drops. So we're going to put two in each bottle. So we got the tablets in each one. We're going to start pouring this. I just noticed on the lids, that's one thing I didn't like, because you, as you can see them, some of them had that little seal, so you know when you take off your lid on other drinks, you always got that one little seal. Well, one way to sterilize it, four of them stayed on. It says it doesn't matter. But for further reference, I think I'll just somehow shake it up real good and pour the sterilization over the cap so that way they keep their seal. I like to have that seal. So here we go, we're gonna start pouring our beer. Okay, now we got our Mr. Beer, we're gonna start pouring our beer. Tilt the bottle just a little bit, keep that foam from getting in there, I hope. Oh yeah, mm, can't wait. But it's gonna be like 10 days before I can try it. Right now it's 15th of December, so it'll be next year. When it says upended, you just gotta do it like this. Then you could see if it leaks too. Hopefully it doesn't, so it's not leaking. Just do that a couple times. I think mainly it's because if you added the sugar by the teaspoon like you're supposed to, it probably helps mix it, but these are those little tablets in there, so I'll do that a couple times. Maybe even do it once or twice while it's getting ready. Well, we got them all bottled, capped, up hinted each one, and we still have a little bit of beer left. So I gotta go find something I can use to put in there. I don't wanna waste nothing. And as always, after you bottle them, then what's the next procedure? Yeah, packaging is the next. And why not package it? store it in a proper container. Then I'm going to take these downstairs, put them in that basement where the temperature stays that same temperature, 68 to 76 I believe, and we got to keep it in there for another 7 to 10 days. So probably January, one of the first weeks of January I'll be drinking some. And of course we'll have this on this video. And we'll have the name on it, I'll have the labels made. So we'll know what the name of the beer I come up with, which I think I'm already thinking of an idea. Thanks for watching Beer Making with Clark. Beer Making 101. All right, we got the beer taken downstairs. I got it washing here. Got to wash the jug again. And just for the fun, I did another sterilize. We sterilized the jug as well. And we'll have to do that again before we do it. But it never hurts to do it before and after. I can't be too cautious. So now we wait. Okay. It's been another 14 days. It is the 2nd of January. Our beer has been stored pretty much at 67 degrees. So now our next step is grab a bottle of this. Stick this in our beer fridge. Get it real cold. And we'll try this a little bit later tonight. Finish this video off. Notice the other beers. Yeah. The homemade. Ooh. I'm going to leave them in there for right now until I do a test. And we'll see how it does. Thanks for watching. Beer making 101 with Clark. Okay, as I previously mentioned, we're at the end. We're ready for labeling. We're going to stick some labels on the beer. 
see how quick I can do this. So I bring you our my brew, my first brew I'm going to call it, Wisconsin Winter Brew from Clark's Brewing Company. See what else we did. Growing 101 Ale, Clark's Brewing Company, Creef Core, Illinois. Hey, got to have Grilling 101 beer because when you're grilling, you have to have a beer. It's like a law. So that's the names of the beer. I got a couple other ones I personalized a different way. But these are the main ones I did. Again, my brewing process is done. They're labeled now the best part. The tasting and drinking of it. So here I am. We're opening up my first batch of Grilling 101 beer. As you see, I hear it. Whoa, had carbonation. We're going to put it in an ice cold mug. Looks like beer, don't it? Whoa! Here we go, first taste of my home brew. That is really good. Woo! Don't you wish you had some of this home brew? Thanks for watching Beer Making 101. Making beer with Clark. Ah, I'm not gonna make some homemade jerky to go with it. Thanks for watching.